She's beauty and she's grace. I mean, I've looked like a vision for the last three vlogs, but today, today is Thursday. I'm hyping myself up to go for a run. I've got my espresso. I have to have a shot of coffee before I go. Let me lift this up. And um, I don't want to go. I'm not in the mood to go. The weather is miserable. It's just essentially 50 shades of grey, but 50 bad shades. I've never seen that film, to be fair, or read the book. I'm going to walk the dogs on the beach with my mum today. Um, we're gonna get a little Starbucks and just, I mean, that's literally all we can do. So we're gonna go do that. And I'm also gonna do some makeup. I filmed a purple eyeshadow look on my stories the other day. And I'm gonna film it for this YouTube video because it seemed to be very popular and I did actually really enjoy it. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy it too. I wish eating croissants and lying down is what made you fit and healthy. That's what I really wish. Cause I would love that and I'd be the fittest person in the world I'd literally I'd be the fittest and healthiest person in the world if that's if that was the case but it's not is it Franco do you want to come running with me <laughs> no <laughs> go see <laughs> I also spoke about my playlist that I use and I'll link it down below because a lot of other jazz hand lovers loved it so this is what I run to and if this song comes up oh we're not going yet we're not going yet not yet oh if this song comes on she ain't stopping it just never gets easier, ever. No part of running gets easier. But I'm just trying to get into more of a routine with how often I go, um, not putting any pressure on myself. Time-wise, distance-wise, um, I do have one of these watches. This is, it's not the best actually, it's a Garmin one. I've sent it back to Amazon once already because I just don't think it's very accurate with like my heart rate and stuff. Um, but I ran 3K on Tuesday and just ran 3K again, which to some people, my sweat's making me itchy. To some people isn't very far, but for me, I'm really trying to move away from any form of numbers because it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me to try and beat my time or to beat my distance because I can't cope with the pressure of not being able to do that. Um, and it's weird, I've only got attachments to things like that where it involves scales or exercise, like fitness based stuff. Um, and then if I do beat a time or if I do run extra, then I feel amazing for it, but I just kind of leave it there. Like on Tuesday, my watch flashed up and said that it was my fastest 3K I'd done and today i was a minute slower which is quite a long time in terms of running but i don't feel any worse off for having not beat my time on tuesday and that's because i've trained my mind to think that way and you have to do that when it comes to exercise you have to find what works for you in every way shape or form every single day that i go for a run that's cute every single day that i run i always feel incredible i think that is just stunning so I'm gonna go have a shower and get ready for the beach. It's literally gonna be the highlight of my day today because the sun's come out. It's gonna be like one of those lovely beach day and the boys literally love the beach. So see you when I look.
Good boy. Can I have um, one large skinny cappuccino with chocolate on top, extra yeah. hot, and one large oat milk toffee nut latte, extra hot, but just one shot of toffee nut syrup. Yeah, ready for now. That's it, thanks. 600 pounds. Where's my phone? Should better only do one shot. It's not going to be extra hot, is it? No. Thank you. Nah, don't worry, that's fine. Thank you. Shout out to whoever that was serving me in Starbucks because I've never had such lovely customer service. I always have to check my coffee there as well because I get it wrong every time. Every time. And for £800 a coffee, you want it to be right, don't you? Right, Vinny's beside himself. See you at the beach. raspberries, grapes, Greek yogurt, cinnamon, honey, and then the seed mix. Three seed mix, high in fiber, a mix of sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and golden lin seeds. These are from Asda, I think. Yeah, they are from Asda. Okay, before I film, I need to sort out my studio. I'm getting stressed with the amount of equipment that I've got in here that I have no idea how to use. My friend Dan's let me borrow these softbox lights, which I love, but the room's just not big enough to hold them. So I've got these little ones and I just need to sort everything out. One of the tripod stands is broken. I bought these from Ikea, which you would have seen in my first vlog. So I just need to fill them with all of that, build my new drawer and put that in there and just have a general tidy up because everything's an absolute mess. I don't know if anybody's used this brand before, Dusk, but I bought some new bedding because we only had one set and it was like so discounted 400 thread count and um there was an extra 10 percent off so i think i got something like 35 percent off or 40 percent off it was really really good so i'm gonna wash this and i'll let you know what it's like i'm going to film this purple look that i did on my instagram stories the other day i basically used two palettes this little one from Primark, I'm aware Primark is closed right now, so you can't really get it, but I'm sure it will still be there like in two weeks time. I'm really out. And then this palette from Makeup Revolution is called the Utopia palette. Okay, so I'm just starting off by prepping my eyelids with a bit of concealer, just to prep the base. And I'm just buffing that all the way up to the brow bone. I'm starting off with this Primark don't name their shade, so I don't know what the shade is, but it's this middle shade under the mauve section, if you do manage to get it. And I've got a Zoeva 227 brush. And what I'm gonna do is start by placing that in my socket. And then once I place the product, I'm also just taking it out a little bit but keeping it all up spectrum a08 brush and then i'm just buffing over that and when i'm buffing i want you want to make sure that you keep everything lifted so i'm just kind of in the direction going up and out and then i use my finger just to kind of clean up as i go then i'm going to build on that so i'm going to do that again and then 
buff over again. So you want to repeat the process however many times you feel you want the look to go. But this is only a transitional colour, so you don't want to go too ham. Next up, I'm going in with this very bright purple here called Urbanism. And I've got the Spectrum A12 brush, and I'm just gonna coat I'm just gonna coat the brush in the purple. And what I'm gonna do now is just place this very, very gently, just keep tapping and place the product on the outer corner of my socket and the outer part of my eyelid. So you can create like a little cut shape because we're gonna blend it out. And then I'm going back in with the same blending brush that I just had and I'm keeping everything small and close to the product as I first start and then as the product disperses, move it out further. And with this look, you wanna keep it really up and out because we're just kind of pretty much doing eye makeup on the top of a part of the eyelid today. I'm just gonna swap in with the uh, the Zoeva blending brush because I feel like that one's slightly too big for this section. A small blending brush might be a bit easier. Then I have this NYX Glitter Glue Primer, which has broken on me. Um, and you just wanna pop a bit onto the back of your hand and get a flat brush of any kind. And just work it onto the brush until the product goes a little bit more transparent. And then press it all over the center of the lid. Quite high, not above the socket line, but going over the crease of your socket line. Then I'm taking this colour called Glimpse from the Revolution palette and I'm just going to pop it onto my finger. This kind of makes the product far more pigmented than using a brush. And then I'm just going to press that on top of where we've just put the primer. Make sure that all of the primer is covered. run the brush just over to make sure everything's blended again. This outside shape is really important to keep it elongated because it's like part of the look. And then taking this colour here from the Primark palette, this is a My Kitco My Defining Crease brush. I'm just going to place that on the inner corner of my eye, slightly again overlapping. Then I'm taking this really dark shade down in the bottom, bottom middle, My Kitco My Precise Crease Brush. This is one of my favourite brushes ever. And I'm just going to press that into the outer corner of my lash line. So I'm just going to press that in first. And then I've got a Morphe M506 brush, which is one of my favorites, and just buff over that. And then again, you wanna build that up to as much as you like, but just focusing on that real outer edge as close to the lash line as possible. Just to intensify the pigment a little bit, I'm just taking it on a pencil brush, just to really pack on the color. And buffing that out this top light pink shade and I'm just taking it on the real tip of this brush. Uh, this is a MAC 217 and I'm just going over where we've put the eyeshadow and don't worry if this looks a bit full on to begin with because we're going to buff it right out. Where we've put the eyeshadow and where there's no product whatsoever and then I'm just going to buff over that. We just want to make sure that the purple really transitions into skin colour rather than just being purple and then skin. Before I do my skin, I'm just gonna take my wet wipe and just run it underneath my under eye. I don't want there to be a sharp line here, so try and avoid kind of going too close, but just to get rid of any excess eyeshadow that's dropped. And you can see that's quite a lot. So. 
This is one of the reasons why if I'm using a dark colour or a heavier eye, I like to do my eyes first. For the first base of my skin, I am going to use the Chanel water tint. I've spoken about this so much on my Instagram. It's honestly, where's my brush? It's absolutely beautiful. It's like a tinted glass for your skin is the only way I can describe it. Um, and I like to use this Spectrum, this Spectrum B01 brush because you want something really flat. It comes with, um, it comes with this, but it's utter shite. So I don't advise using that. And then when you're placing the product on your skin, you just want to keep this under eye area really free because we want to only have under eye products on, the, on that area. Honestly, the finish of it is just so lovely. You can see the way it shines. I love it. It is expensive. Um, but you know, what is life without a little tree? Do you know what song I've got in my head? Go, daddy, go. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da. Go, dirty, go. Next up, I'm going to do my brows. I've got a brow tutorial on this, so I'll link that below so you don't have to watch me do my brows 10 million times. I want to keep the skin quite light and fresh for this look. I did it like this the other day and it worked really well against like the heaviness of the purple. So I'm using my NARS tinted moisturiser, which is one of my favourite base products ever. I'm gonna put this all over my face on top of the water tint. Why is everything aching? My arms and my fingers. I'm going in with the same Barry M concealer that I used as my eye base. I'm just gonna spot conceal a couple of areas. Tap that into the skin. You don't wanna move it around too much. Looking glossy. I've got my Maybelline Anti-Age Eye Razor Concealer. I use this all the time and I have done 400 years. I'm placing this under my eye, but making sure that I don't interrupt that shape that we've made of the elongated kind of, well, shape, yeah. And then I just buff back and forth, but making sure this is kept in a straight line. Because again, we just want to keep that shape as best we can. As best we can. All together now. Going to take a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. Take it up into my temples. Press a bit down onto my cheeks. If I've got really light coverage on my skin, I tend to kind of press products into the skin rather than like buff and move them around a lot. A little bit over the bridge of the nose. Next, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight Beauty Wand. It's my favorite. I say this is my favorite all the time, no one cares. And also, I've got loads of favorites, so there's just no point in saying that. So I'll place it on with my finger and then just get a clean finger and go over the top just to make sure again that we've got no harsh lines anywhere. A little bit on the top of my lip. A little bit down the bridge of one nose. And then I like to take a little bit above my brow bones. This is my favorite nude from Spectrum Collections called Element. I'm just gonna pop a bit onto the bottom of my lip. Press and transfer to the top. And I've got the little A12 brush from Spectrum and just buffing out very gently right to the edge of my lip. My favorite tip for lip liner is to keep your lips closed. It keeps the lips taut and just kind of gives you an easier stencil to go by. I just take a lip brush and then just blending everything together. I'm gonna pop a tiny bit of gloss into the center. I'm gonna run this middle purple color just under the outer edge of my bottom lash line. 
I'm just gonna pop mascara on my top lashes for this look, I think. Just taking a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic. It's not magic. I'm just gonna press that into the under eye area, a little bit down the center, wherever you tend to get oily or have a bit more shine. Taking a little bit of concealer again on the tiniest little brush. All I am doing is just taking it very close underneath my brow bone just to brighten everything a tiny a tiny bit more take a clean little thin brush and go over the top and that is it done yeah i don't know i just love it i i feel like i really would wear this I would have to obviously wear like the right outfit with it, but I don't wear good outfits anyway. So let me know what you think if you like the purple. <sighs> it's half past four. I feel like throughout lockdown, we should have all the time in the world, but I just feel like I don't. Everything's a bit of a mess. The kitchen's a mess. The, um, I need to put a wash on. I need to clean my brushes. I need to cook dinner. Is there anywhere in this house with nice lighting? No. Right, I've propped you here because it's literally the only place in the entire house with a little bit of lighting. I don't know if this looks like I've been punched in the face in this light. I'm going to tidy up the kitchen, feed the dogs, um, tidy away on my studio, wash my brushes and cook dinner. Today's jobs. Do you want to show everyone Mr. Dino? That's Mr. Dino, isn't it? He's lovely. Should I put him next to you like that? Okay. That is nice. Yummy. I don't know how to tell him that in about a week's time, maybe a week and a half if I can last, this monstrosity is going to be removed from the lounge because this is where my tree is going it goes in this corner here that that door doesn't work we've taken the what do you call it out of that thing out door handle wow and the tree's going to go there but yeah i bloody hate this thing you are just so cute and you are still a little baby aren't you i love the way his little paws grass like grass brand his toys <laughs> For dinner tonight, we are having king prawn tagliatelle, and I'm going to talk you through the recipe. It's quite a simple one, but it's one of our favourites. Please also let me know if you're sick of seeing what I've had for dinner. Obviously, I'm trying to cook a lot throughout lockdown. I do love cooking anyway, but if you're if you're bored of seeing the recipes, then um, please let me know because I'll not include them. You want to finely slice one white onion, a red chilli, three or four garlic cloves and whatever tomatoes you have. You can use chopped tomatoes, plum tomatoes or fresh or a mixture of both like I have. Fry off the onion in some vegetable oil or olive oil for a couple of minutes. Then you want to add in one anchovy, your garlic cloves and your chilli. That's cooked off, add a splash of balsamic vinegar and all of your tomatoes. Add some Italian mixed herbs and mix that round for a couple of minutes. I like to mash my tomatoes down just to make the consistency a little bit better and then add a splash of white wine. Once that's simmered for about 15 to 20 minutes, add in your fresh prawns and meanwhile cook your tagliatelle in a separate pan. Then I like to mix everything together and cook the tagliatelle off in the sauce for a couple of minutes. Add some fresh parsley and serve. Not many things make me happier than when I've taken all my makeup off after a day of wearing makeup. I'm aware this 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 vlog is a little bit repetitive of the things that I've done in the last two. Obviously, naturally, we are in lockdown, so I am limited on what I can do. 
the next vlog that you will see mum and I are going to a really beautiful garden centre um, which I'm really excited about because I am so close to decorating my house for Christmas which obviously I will film um, and will be a lot more exciting content than me tidying shit around my house and cooking. <laughs> if you did enjoy the video once again please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it means the world and your support generally since starting this youtube thing has just been mental like i'm so grateful for the support thank you so much and i hope you have a lovely weekend <laughs>